Welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. My name is Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, we'll continue our series on keyboard shortcuts. This time, we'll explore the shortcuts we can use with the function keys. Function keys are F1 through F12. Most of us are familiar with F1. In all Office programs, F1 brings up help. In this case, we have our help menu on the task pane. If we want to go out to Microsoft Online or bring up the Office Assistant, F1 is how we do it. F2 is one of my favorites. When I'm working inside a spreadsheet and I need to edit a cell, rather than going up into the formula bar to do my editing, I prefer to do my editing inside the cell. F2 will allow me, for example, to change my last number and make it $128, or 128 is the constant. And the equivalent to that is double clicking. Double clicking or F2 are the same. And if I choose not to make any further changes, I can use Escape to return to normal. F3 and F5 I use a lot since I like to use names. F3 allows me to paste a named cell or a named constant into a formula. So in this case in D6 I have used the F3 shortcut to paste my name constant sales tax into my formula. Let me give you another example. Over here, let's say that we want to get our highest value, so we use the max function, equals max, left parentheses, and then the F3 shortcut, and within one of my name ranges, for example, transport, choose that, finish the formula with the right parentheses, click OK, I was able to use the F3 to paste in a named range transport into my formula. F4, frankly, I don't use that frequently. It allows me to redo my recent, most, re most recent command. For example, if I wanted to make this italic, and then a minute later I decide, oh, I want to make this italic, F4 will do it. Frankly, I feel that using the format paintbrush is a lot better. It gives me more choices and it's a better alternative. F5, as I mentioned, along with F3, I use names a lot. So being able to go to a specific cell, a name, or a special dialog box is really great. Let's just say that I'm off somewhere uh, in my spreadsheet. I'm way, way, way down and I want a quick way to be able to go home. Well, F5 and then type in my cell A1 will bring me home. Uh, F5 will also take me to any name cell or any name range. So even though it may be in a different worksheet, going to F5 and then clicking the name will bring me to that named range in my workbook. Another way that we can use F5 is with the special dialog box. F5, and this time we'll choose special, and I want to see all of the cells in this worksheet that contain formulas. Click OK, and there you are. F5 special has highlighted the two cells that contain formulas. Very handy, very useful. F6 I don't use so frequently. If I were to split a pane, let's say so select the cell here somewhere in the middle and go up to window and split, I now have four distinct panes. Well, if I don't want to use my mouse and I want to move from pane to pane, F6 will allow me to do so. So F6 moves me over to this pane, to this pane, to the next one, and to the next one. Okay, let's remove the split. F7, very handy for spell checking. Let's say that if I were to type something in uh, such as uh, and then use our F7 button. It brings up the dialog box and I can make my change and I'm all set. All right, I love F7. F8, if I'm working with someone's uh, computer or their laptop and I'm using the touchpad and I just can't seem to get control and selecting my, my mouse is going all over. Well, when I want to select a range, I have two options. If I hold down the shift key and while I'm holding down shift, I move my arrows in the direction I want. That's one way to select the range. If I don't want to hold down shift, I can press F8, which puts us in extended mode and now I just use uh, my arrow so I don't have to hold anything else down once I hit F8. Now F8 is a toggle so when I choose F8 
once more, it will remove the extended mode from there. And now if I move my arrows without holding down shift or pressing F8 again, I'm only getting the cell that I moved to. F9, uh, discuss later on when we talk about turning off automatic calculation. F10, frankly, I don't use that frequently, but I do like when I'm using the keyboard to be able to get up to my, me my menu. So I use Alt, hold down the off key, and then I find the letter that I want to go to the that section of the menu. For example, data, D is underlined, and it brings me to the data section of the menu bar. And then I can use my arrow keys to make my selection for what I want to perform. F11, very handy. When I've created some simple data calculations and I want with one shortcut, one key to create a chart, F11 does the trick. F11 does create a chart, which is the default column type chart, in its own separate workbook. And from there, the chart wizard becomes available when I create that new chart with F11. And I can choose a different chart type. For example, uh, come back here. And remember that with charts, we're not harming our data if we delete the sheet. And we'll delete it, and everything is fine. Love that one. For our last one, the F12 key. It's a very much underutilized shortcut key. It's kind of hidden away. We're familiar with Control S to be able to save a worksheet. Well, F12 allows us to do File Save As. So if I wanted to change the name of my worksheet or the type of worksheet, F12 is a great shortcut to help us do File Save As. Okay, well, we'll see you in the next Tips and Time Savers.